week number dos of this virtual learning stuff. You guys totally rocked it last week, so let's go and get started. First, here's a clip of a dog who's having a tough, tough time. So um, this is the, our working station for our, today's lesson. And I hope you guys learned something because I definitely did not go into our trash can uh, to go pick up this um, empty uh, gallon of milk to uh, teach you guys. And I definitely did not brew some coffee so I can make this black. Okay, so the point of this is so you can see how different uh, objects can measure uh, capacity and how um, we can convert from gallons all the way to two fluid ounces. So right here, I have a whole gallon of this really nasty dark water. Yeah. Well, I just saved our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. And here, I couldn't really find something that was perfectly a quart. So I found this thing um, in my house, and up to here, I pull it up right here, it's supposed to be a port. So let's just hope that actually works. And these cups that are just coffee mugs, apparently they're a pint. They hold a pint of liquid. Then these are actual measuring uh, equipment. They measure a cup. And so I found these from like some obscure random baking uh, counter that was in this house. And finally, these little dandy uh, random uh, cups hold two fluid ounces each. Um, gallon of dirty water, it's supposed to fill uh, four times um, this uh, up to this line because a whole gallon equals four quarts. So there's enough liquid to fill up this cup up to this point four times. So we're going to see if that's true. Now, this quart is supposed to be able, whenever you fill it up to right here, it's supposed to be able to fill two of these cups. This cup is a pint, and a pint is supposed to be able to fill up two cups. So these, this blue one and this red one. One of these cups, it's supposed to be able to fill up eight fluid ounces. So each of these is two fluid ounces. So two, four, six, eight. With one of these, I'm supposed to be able to fill up every single one of these. Okay, so there's supposed to be uh, four quarts in a gallon. So like four uh, times to this line, it's supposed to be able to fill up this whole gallon. Uh, I had to kind of fix the gallon, apparently the metal, uh, these jugs are not exactly a gallon, so I, it kind of uh, looks less than the full thing, but this is exactly what the gallon is. So I'm going to pour this four times. That's one quart. And a quart kind of sounds like a quarter, so an easy way to remember this is that a quarter makes a whole dollar. Well, I mean, four quarters makes a whole dollar, four quarters makes a whole gallon. So that's one quarter, one quart. This is the second quart. This is the third quart. And this is the last quart. Which be exactly what to get to the two It emptied out the whole thing into four equals. Now I'm going to put this dirty water off the side. And a quart equals two pints. So these coffee, coffee mugs uh, are each a pint. They hold a pint of coffee all the way to the top. So I'm supposed to be able to uh, break this up into two pints, even. So if you want to zoom in, so you can see. That's one pint. This is another pint. Let's see how Ah, a little bit messy, but it worked. So one of these pints is supposed to equal two cups. I'm supposed to be able to pour one of these pints into two cups equally. So let me try my best at not making a mess in that kind of rhyme. Let's see. Pour it up. Oh. I'm going to have a tough time cleaning this afterwards. Nice. So one pint equals two cups. And lastly, um, and I'm so glad this is the last one because I made a total mess on my counter. Uh, one of these cups is supposed to be able to fill eight fluid ounces. 
So you see four little cups here because each is two full fluid ounces. So two, four, six, eight. I'm supposed to be able to take any of these two. I know they don't, they don't look the same, but they're, they're both cups according to their labels. That's two, four, six, and eight. There we go. Just to go backwards, I could go uh, from here to here. I could pour these two, uh, these uh, eight fluid ounces back into my cup. I can uh, pour these two cups back into my pint. I can pour these two pints back into my quart. And then I can pour four of these back into my gallon. That's how capacity conversions work in the customer system. All right, so what did we learn from our lesson? That one gallon of that dirty water can be poured into four quarts. One of those quarts can be full, filled into two pints, and two pints can be filled into two of those measuring cups. And then those two me one of those measuring cups can be poured into eight fluid ounces. So here is your customary uh, measuring of volume and capacity. This is also another representation of the conversions. Uh, you see the green part is your gallon. One gallon equals four quarts. That's one, two, three, and four and then one of those quarts uh equals two pints so two two of those orange things are each a pint and then you can't really see what it says in red but one of those pints equals two cups all right here are our notes today one gallon equals four quarts go and write that down one quart equals I'm sorry two pints one pint equals two cups and finally one cup equals it's supposed to be an equal sign eight fluid ounces O-U-N-C-E-S. Now here are some of the things that you're gonna be working on. We're gonna convert four gallons into quarts. I'm just gonna write a Q. Well, there are four quarts in each gallon, so to get it to quarts, you have to multiply. Four times four equals 16. So in four gallons, you have 16 quarts. Okay, what about in three quarts? How many pints do we have? Well, look at your, your formula chart. In one quart, you have two pints. So what do you do? You multiply three times two. Three times two equals six. Three quarts equals six pints. What about five pints converted into cups? Well, if you look up here, in one pint you have two cups. So, five times two equals 10 cups. Lastly, what about seven cups? How many fluid ounces is that? This is the abbreviation for fluid ounces, F-L-O-Z. You're gonna multiply seven times eight. Okay, so that is 56. So. Seven cups equals 56 fluid ounces. Now, if you notice, what I multiplied is I multiplied the relationship between each of the measurements. So between gallons and quarts, the relationship is one to four. So every single gallon I multiplied by four. Now from quarts to pints, the relationship is a quart equals two pints. So one to two. So what did I do? I multiply all three of them by two. Look at the relationship, guys, between each measurement. Now between the pint and the cup, the relationship is also one to two. So what did I do? I took my five pints and I multiplied it by two. Lastly, the cups to the fluid ounces. The relationship is one to eight. So what did I do? I multiplied all seven cups by eight. So what I did is I multiplied how many I had of gallons, quarts, pints, or cups by the relationship shown on my formula chart. Okay, take pause it right here and take a few seconds to copy these problems down. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the odd ones uh, with you and then I want you to pause it and do 
the even ones, the even numbers uh, on your own. And then I want you guys to send this as your assignment. So the first one is seven gallons. We want to get it to quarts. The relationship, if you look back at your notes between gallons and quarts, is for every gallon you have four quarts. So what do I do? I multiply it by four. Seven times four equals uh, 28. Okay, so now you're going to do number two on your own. Three gallons converted into quarts. Number three. 9 quarts into pints. The relationship between quarts and pints is for every quart you have 2 pints. So I am going to multiply 9 times 2. 9 times 2 equals 18. So 9 quarts equals 18 pints. Go ahead and do number 4 on your own. Next one. 6 pints into uh, cups. The relationship relationship between pints and cups is one to two also so you're going to take these six and you're going to multiply it twice and it's going to be 12. six pints equals 12 cups go ahead and do number six on your own now number seven the relationship between cups and fluid ounces is for every cup you have eight fluid ounces so what do you do you multiply it two times eight two times eight equals 16 fluid ounces go ahead and do number eight and send these to me all right um here is your assignment i hope you guys uh understand if you don't um just pause the video watch it as many times as you need lastly just because i know you guys miss these so much um i still need you guys to be practicing your uh upsy your order of operations and your fraction so you're going to start getting them um again you, this also needs to be sent to me as well as your with your assignment so today's upsy is the average person blinks 1,200 times an hour. If this fun fact is true, what is the total number of times that one person will blink in 3.2 hours? So think if you're making or breaking a total on this upsy. The order of, of, of operations is bracket parentheses 24 plus 6 parentheses divided by 10 bracket minus 2. Remember to use all of your do all of your work uh, number your steps on the top and simplify at the bottom the fraction of the day is lillian travels one third of the way to her mom's house listening to country music and one twelfth of the way listening to pop music what fraction of the trip was lillian li listening to either pop or country music right here they're asking you to combine the fraction of time she listened to country which is one third and the fraction of time that she listened to pop, which is 112. And then um, it's going to give you your answer. Remember that for the first part of the story is being told in thirds and the second part of the, the story is being told in twelfths. So you can't combine it like that. So make sure to make the stories look the same and um, solve for the, for, for the answer. Um, I hope you guys are doing uh, great. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to, for another great week. Remember to send your stuff to the following Google phone number. So here is my phone number again for my Google phone number. It's 210-764-9790. So make sure that I can see your work. Make sure that you do your UPSI and your order of operations and FOD and uh, send it to this phone number and uh, with your name so that you can start getting your grades. Good job, guys. Keep it up. All right, guys, this is Mr. Ibarra's lesson. So here you go. Guys, welcome to another week. Bienvenidos a otra semana. Vamos a continuar con las medidas, pero ahora vamos a dar las medidas de volumen y capacidad. Ok. Y en la volumen y capacidad, vamos a ver que un galón es igual a cuatro cuartos de un galón. Un cuarto de galón va a ser igualmente o equivalente a dos pintas. Una pinta va a ser equivalente a dos tazas. Y una taza va a ser equivalente a ocho onzas líquidas. Okay, ahorita les doy los ejemplos. Estas son las medidas que vamos a usar hoy para esta semana. Vamos a hacer volumen y capacidad. Un galón es equivalente a cuatro cuatro de un galón. Un cuarto de galón es equivalente a dos pintas. Una pinta es equivalente a dos tazas. Y una taza es equivalente a ocho onzas. El primer ejemplo va a ser galones a cuartos. Y nota que vamos a necesitar que multiplicar que tres galones son cuántos cuartos 
pues aquí en el modelo tengo un galón, dos galones, tres galones. Cada uno de estos es un galón. En cada galón tengo cuatro cuartos. Cuatro, cuatro y cuatro. Y cuatro por tres va a ser doce. En que tres galones va a ser equivalente a doce cuartos. Me voy a ir de cuartos a pintas. Que un cuarto es equivalente a dos pintas. En que si tengo cuatro cuartos, ¿cuántas pintas van a ser? Pues cada cuarto, aquí tengo cuatro. Cada uno de esos tiene dos pintas. Uno, dos, dos, dos y dos. Dos 4 va a ser 8 en que 4 cuartos es equivalente a 8 pintas. La tercer ejemplo va a ser pintas a tazas en que una pinta es equivalente a dos tazas. Ahora si tengo tres pintas, ¿cuántas tazas son esas? Pues tengo una pinta, dos y tres cada uno de estos hay dos tazas dos tazas dos tazas tres por dos me van a dar tres seis tazas en que la respuesta va a ser seis pero la última ejemplo va a ser tazas a onzas cuatro tazas son equivalentes a cuántas onzas pues cada taza tiene ocho onzas Aquí tengo una, dos, tres, cuatro tazas. Cada taza va a tener ocho onzas líquidas. En que cuatro por ocho son treinta y dos. En que cuatro por ocho es treinta y dos. Por cuatro tazas van a ver treinta y dos onzas líquidas. Ok, Mr. Barasquez, this is your uh, assignment. Your, I already did the odd ones for you. You're going to do the even ones. So you're gonna, I... Did seven gallons into quarts. Siete por cuatro son 28. Tienen que convertir ahora ustedes tres galones a cuartos. Número tres. Nueve cuartos a pintas. Hice nueve por dos son 18. Ahora tienen que ustedes solos convertir tres cuartos a pintas. Número cinco. Seis pintas a cups. Seis por dos son 12. Ahora tienen que convertir el número 6 ustedes. Número 7. 2 cups a um, 16 fluid ounces. 2 por 8 son 16. Ahora tienen que ustedes convertir a uh, número 8. Aparte de los problemas que tienen que mandar, también tienen que hacer estos tres problemas. El primer problema lo tienen que hacer con su upsy. Uh, en inglés dice, The average person blinks 1,200 times an hour. If this fun fact is true, what is the total number of times that one person will blink in 3.2 hours? La persona por, de, de promedio parpadea 1,200 veces por hora. Si este hecho divertido es cierto, ¿cuál es el número total de veces que una por, persona parpadea en 3.2 horas? La segunda cosa que tienen que hacer es eh, resolver ese problema de orden de operaciones. So, tienen que resolver eso que está en uh, amarillo la tercera cosa que tienen que resolver es este problema que en inglés dice Lillian travels a third of the way to her mom's house listening to country music and one twelfth of the way listening to pop music what fraction of the trip was Lillian listening to either pop or country Lillian viaja a un tercio del camino a la casa de su madre escuchando música country y una doceva del camino escuchando música pop ¿Qué fracción del viaje escuchaba Lilian música pop o country? Tienen que resolver estos tres problemas y mandárselos al número de mis, del señor Ibarra al, uh, en la próxima pantalla. All right, send your work from Mr. Ibarra to 10 802 Mándenle el trabajo a mis, al señor Ibarra al número 210-802-6944. Hey, fifth grade, I hope you had a good and restful weekend. Happy Monday. Um, just a few things really quickly. I want to remind you that you no longer have to send me pictures of your assignment because you will be submitting it on quizzes. The link will always be underneath um, the YouTube video and all you have to do is click on it. 
please, some of you are still not putting your name. You're putting a, a random different nickname. I need you to make sure that you put your first name and at least your last initial. Also, some of us are taking it three, four, five times. Um, so I just wanna let you know that you will only have two chances to take it, okay? If you are not happy with your grade the first time, that's okay, you can retake it, but after that, that is it. I am able to see how many times you take it. So if you end up taking it more than two times, I am only gonna take the higher grade of the first two. Okay, so your limit is only two times that you get to take it. All right, okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Please make sure that you have completed all three of last week's lesson before starting this week's. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about main idea. Okay, so our learning target is I will evaluate details read to determine key ideas. So remember, main idea, central idea, key idea, all means the same thing. So we're going to be looking at main idea and supporting details. I want you to watch this brain pop video to kind of just refresh your memory on main idea and then we'll get started on today's lesson. Ah, oh, gross. I wish other people would ride their bikes instead of always using cars. Dear Tim and Moby, I don't understand what my teacher means when he asks me to find the main idea. Can you help me? From Gladys. Sure, Gladys. The main idea is just the main point that's being stated in a paragraph, essay, article, or other passage. It's what's specifically being said about a particular topic. The topic of a paragraph or passage is the general subject. Okay, well, say you're reading an article about how cheetahs can run at very high speeds. The topic would be cheetahs, because that's the general subject of the article, cheetahs. And the main idea would be that cheetahs can run fast, because that's the point the article is trying to get across. Details support what the author is trying to say with examples. They're sort of like evidence as to why the main idea is true. The details would explain what makes a cheetah run so fast, how fast it can run, things like that. All right, let's, let's read this paragraph and try to find the main idea. Not only is smoking cigarettes a disgusting and smelly habit, it's also extremely bad for your health. It has been proven to cause cancer, lung disease, and heart disease, and to weaken your immune system. Smoking makes it a lot harder to breathe, which means it's more difficult to play sports and get the exercise you need to stay healthy. It is also harmful for those hanging around a smoker because they breathe the smoky air. Even though most people are aware of how bad smoking is for them, more than 1,000 people die each day from its effects. So first, let's figure out the topic. What would you say the topic is, the general subject that this paragraph is discussing? That's right, the topic is smoking, specifically cigarette smoking. Now let's try to find the main idea. To find the main idea, ask yourself, what point is the writer trying to make? It's always helpful to skim through the passage again and see what words are repeated and what idea the author is trying to stress or get across. What do you think the main idea is, Moby? Well, the writer is saying that smoking is gross, but more specifically that smoking is bad for your health. You can tell this from the details in the paragraph. That smoking causes cancer and heart and lung disease, that it makes you sick, and that it makes it hard to breathe. Sometimes the main idea will be at the start of a paragraph or article. In the passage we just read, the writer pretty much stated the main idea in the first sentence. But the main idea can be stated anywhere in a piece of text. Sometimes it's in the second or third paragraph, for instance, or sometimes it'll come at the very end as a conclusion. It's not always that clear, though, and sometimes you have to do a little more work to figure it out. One important thing to remember is that sometimes you're going to have to reread the passage and go back to it a few times to get a good sense of what's being discussed. Let's look at the newspaper article that Moby was reading earlier. When we can, it's important to carpool, use public transportation like buses and trains, ride a bike, or walk instead of driving a car. These things release fewer dangerous toxins into the air. You may not realize it, but air pollution is becoming a bigger problem every day. It is terribly damaging to the environment and the air we breathe. For this reason, we should try to cut back on harmful emissions. 
One of the best ways to reduce pollution is to use methods of transportation that are less harmful to the environment. So what would you say are the topic and main idea in this passage? Right, the topic is air pollution. And the main idea is that driving cars less helps reduce air pollution. Yes, and riding your bike is a good way to do that. Anyway, if you're ever stuck on finding a main idea, it helps to ask yourself general questions about the passage. They can be things like, is it about a person, an idea or a theory, an event? That way you can start by getting a broader idea of what's being discussed. Another helpful thing you do is pretend that someone has asked you what the paragraph or essay is about. If you can give an answer that sums up the passage in just one sentence, you've probably got the main idea. But we just got home. Where are we supposed to ride our bikes to? What do you mean we can't stop riding our bikes? I'm not so sure you got the main idea of that article. Okay, I want you to open up your books to page 76, and I want you to take a few minutes to read your reader's tips. Remember, it's important to read this page because they have a lot of key words, um, and it explains ex uh, specifically key idea and details in an informational text. So pause the video and read this page. Okay, now that you read it, I want to just point two things out here. So key idea is the most important idea or concept an author wishes to convey in an informational text. So the most important idea, okay? And then details specific information that supports a main idea of an informational text. So it supports. So remember, we've talked about this. This is the top of your desk and these are your legs. Without the legs, this isn't going to be supported. Okay, so keep that in mind. As we're reading, <clears throat> I'm sorry, as you're reading, I want you to be sure that you are thinking about these questions in your head. Number one, what is the topic of the text or what is the text about? The answers to these questions reveal the topic of the text. Number two, what does the author want me to know about the topic? The answer to this question reveals the key idea or ideas of the entire text. Number three, what does each paragraph say about the topic? The answer to this question reveals the key idea of each paragraph. And then number four, what details does the author use to support the key idea of each paragraph? The answer to this question reveals the author's perspectives on the topic. Okay, so today's story is on page 77 and it is titled Baseball Country. Uh, first thing we do, of course, is R NAG. You're doing this with me, R Q P C. And then there at the bottom, we have NAG, okay? We're gonna do things a little bit differently this week. Last week, I did the first R with you, and then um, you did NAG R, and then I read the questions and answer choices to you. Now, this week, I'm going to expect you to complete R NAG R on your own. I'm still gonna be reading the questions and answer choices to you, but I want you now to do R NAG R. So right now, you're gonna pause the video and you're going to read it. You're going to do narrator, author's purpose, and genre, and then reread it. Once you've done all those things, go ahead and resume the video. Okay, let's take a look at number one. Number one is asking, what are the key ideas of paragraphs one and two? Key ideas, and now it's not asking you of the whole story, it's asking you of paragraphs one and two. So what are you gonna do? Go back and reread paragraphs one and two. So pause the video and go do that right now. at the answer choices now that you reread paragraphs one and two. A, Pride's surprising rise to fame was based on his childhood in rural Mississippi. B, Pride's service in the US Army caused him to change career goals. 
C. Despite Pride's talent, he was not selected to play on a major league baseball team. D. Although Pride's first interest was music, his athletic ability drew him to a baseball career. Make sure you're highlighting your keywords. We already know your proof is paragraphs one and two. Um, label your sillies, your distractor, and then get your correct answer. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Number two says, what is the key idea of paragraph four? So again, we're still looking for the key idea, but now it's just paragraph four. So go back and reread paragraph four. Okay, now that you reread paragraph four, <clears throat> let's look at, excuse me, let's look at the answer choices. F. Americans are pleased to reward talented people. G. Pride is a successful country music artist. H. Is anybody going to San Antonio was a number one hit on the country music charts. J. The CMA honored Pride with the Male Vocalist of the Year Award two times. Let's take a look at our last question, number three. Which statement of a key idea is best supported by the text? So which statement of a key idea is best supported by the text? So that means you have to figure out which one of these would be a key idea that the story supports. Let's take a look at our answer choices. We have A, Pride is a talented musician who achieved popularity and success despite early setbacks. B, pride is an example to Americans who want to pursue unlikely careers. C, pride's background provided him with the skills to become a superstar. D, pride's father supported his dream of becoming a musician, but not a baseball player. There are a lot of key words in these answer choices. They're a little bit lengthy, so you need to make sure that you take your time, please. Highlight key words before you eliminate anything. Okay, that concludes this uh, or today's lesson. Please make sure that you are submitting them on quizzes. I do not need um, pictures anymore as long as you submit it on there. Remember, you are only getting two chances. So if you're not happy with your grade the first time, I'm going to give you another chance to retake it. Um, but that's it. Remember, it tells me how many times that you attempt it. And um, you don't have to do it twice if you don't want to. But if you don't do well that first time, I highly suggest you taking it again. Also, just a reminder that you need to be completing all three lessons. Some of you are still only turning in math or only reading or only science or only two of the three. I know that it's a weird and difficult time right now and we're adjusting to these online um, lessons, but it's very important because we are taking grades, we are writing down who is turning in and who is not. So please make sure that you are completing all three. We'll get through this guys, miss you. Hey guys, good morning. Today's lesson is going to be sectioned into two separate parts. So there is an English version and a Spanish version. If you're in Mystery Bada's class, you can go ahead and skip through mine to see his, but we're both gonna be doing the same thing. So today we're actually gonna be doing a hands-on activity. Instead of taking notes or watching videos or completing quizzes, I'm gonna ask for you to go on a scavenger hunt. So you're gonna be looking for things that are a review of this unit, but also a review view of the previous units that we've completed throughout the year. All you're going to need is paper and pencil. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to look for and you can write it down. You have a couple of days to complete this activity, so not just today. <clears throat> you can have until Thursday and when you are finished with the activity or the scavenger hunt you're going to take a picture of your work and send it to the number at the end of this video on Thursday. So the purpose of this activity is to get you up and moving. You're going to be completing a science scavenger hunt. So you're looking for different examples of some of the topics that we've discussed in science over the last several months. 
So you're going to earn one point for every item that you find at home or in your yard. Write down what you found and share a picture of your findings. Now I'm not expecting you to find an example of every single item. If you can't, don't worry about it. That's not going to affect your grade. All I'm looking for is that you're completing it and you're trying your best. You also don't have to share a picture for every finding, but if you would like to send a picture, you're going to take a picture and send it to the number that's at the end of this video. So let's go through the items. Okay, so the first set of items you're going to be looking for outside. Now remember, we're still practicing safety and social distancing, so I only want you looking in your front or your backyard. So the first item is any living organism, a non-living component of the environment, a non-living component interacting with the living component, a producer, Remember, producers, we say, get their energy directly from the sun and they don't have to eat another living organism to get energy. A consumer is an organism that does need to eat another living organism to get its energy. And a decomposer, remember we talked about in class, decomposers break down dead plants and animals and recycle that back into the earth. A habitat, Evidence of runoff or accumulation. Now remember, this goes back to the water cycle. Runoff and accumulation is the water moving from one place to another, and accumulation is where that water ends up collecting before it evaporates. Something that has been weathered. Remember, weathering is breaking down sediment. Evidence of deposition. Deposition is the dropping of sediments. Now here are the things that you're gonna look for inside. First, something that reflects. Next, something that refracts. Remember, refraction is the bending of light. Something that involves friction, evidence of force, something that uses an electrical circuit, a conductor, remember a conductor allows energy and electricity to flow through it, an insulator stops the flow of energy or stops the flow of electricity. Three things that produce mechanical energy. Remember, mechanical is moving energy. Three things that produce light energy. Three things that use electrical energy. Three things that produce sound energy. Three things that produce thermal energy or heat energy. An example of matter a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Something that is soluble, remember when it's soluble, it dissolves into a liquid. Something that is more dense than water, when it's more dense, it is going to sink to the bottom, not float. Something magnetic, and a mixture or a solution. Now for the bonus, you're gonna observe a food chain in your backyard. Remember that the arrows show the flow of energy. So you're going to start with probably a producer and then the different objects that you're gonna find following the flow of energy. Now on the next slide, I'm going to take a close up so that you can have a second to copy down these items on just a sheet of notebook paper. That's all I'm gonna be asking you to do is um, write the object and then next to it write your example and take a picture and send it to me at the number at the end of the slide. Okay, please make sure that you are writing your name and date at the top of your paper. Go ahead and pause the slide so that you can copy down the outside items that you're looking for. Now pause the video and copy down all the items that you are looking for inside. And finally, here is your bonus.
Hi guys, how y'all doing today? Well today we're going to do a little something different for science. We're going to go on a scavenger hunt. <clears throat> Una buscadera del tesoro. So we're going to look for some stuff inside the house and outside the house. So I'm going to begin by saying the outside things that you, I want you to look for. Le voy a explicar las cosas que quiero que busquen afuera de casa. Les voy a explicar lo que quiero que busquen adentro de casa. Ok, ah, vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con cosas que podemos encontrar afuera de la casa. Que okay, primero, un organismo vivo, un componente no vivo del medio ambiente, o a non living component of the environment, un componente no vivo que interactúa con algo vivo, un productor que puede ser cualquier planta, un consumidor algo que come otro organismo, un decomponedor, that would be a decomposer, un habitar, cualquier cosa donde pueden vivir una cosa, otras cosas afuera de la casa que quiero que encuentren, evidencia de escorrencia o acumulación, which is the evidence of runoff or accumulation, uh, algo que ha sido resistido, something that has been weathered, remember weathering means been breaking down by either wind, water, or ice. And evidencia de deposición. Evidence of deposition. Remember, gets deposited somewhere else. Now these are gonna be things that you can find inside your house. Adentro de la casa. Uh, algo que refleja, something that reflects. Algo que refracta, which is something that refracts. Algo que involucra fricción, something that involves friction. Evidencia de fuerza, what kind of force do you see out there? Algo que utiliza un circuito eléctrico, electric, something that uses an electric circuit, un conductor, y un aislante, which would be an insulator. So, try to find some of those inside your house. Otras cosas que quiero que encuentren adentro de su casa. Tres cosas que producen energía mecánica. Tres cosas que producen energía luminosa, light energy. Tres cosas que usan energía eléctrica. Tres cosas que producen energía sonora, or sound energy. Tres cosas que producen energía térmica. Otras cosas, un ejemplo de materia, matter, que era un sólido, líquido y gas. Uh, algo que es soluble o es soluble, algo que es más denso que agua, algo magnético, una mezcla o solución. Y también quiero que hagan una cadena alimentaria. Por ejemplo, puedo tener hierbas que puede ser un zacate, uh, escarabajos, which are beetles, and then ratones, and then gatos. So that would be your flow of energy for your uh, food chain. Pause the video to copy down the items that you're going to look for outside. Now pause the video to copy down the items that you're going to look for inside your house. 